Drake May, the fifth QB in this year's Star Scrub series, and we still don't have a clear favor at the top of the class. I had mixed feelings on the popular QB1 choice in Caleb Williams, and Bears fans agreed with me as they weren't sold on the USC QB. They also stood tall in support of Justin Fields, but could picking Drake May be a better option? I know Bears fans have trauma about the last UNC QB they picked, but you gotta put the pass to the side. Drake was statistically one of the best quarterbacks in football this year. He had a 90.6 offensive grade, which was ninth in the FBS amongst QBs, 7.5 big time throw percentage, 1.9 turnover worthy play percentage, 11.0 average depth of target, meaning that he was pushing the ball downfield, but he also had a 19.6 pressure to sack percentage, implying that he struggled to get out of trouble when defenders broke through the line. Now, May has been considered QB2 in the 2024 class for a long time, even with Caleb's disappointing past season, but could all the media attention and highlights be swaying people's opinions? Could Drake May actually be the best quarterback this year? Could he be the savior in Chicago? Or should he be below Daniels and or Penix? Only way to figure that out, we gotta look at the film and break his game down trait by trait. Starting off with his strengths, tight window throws, and this comes from his arm strength, anticipation, and confidence. Versus Oregon, 3 by one look here in the red zone against the two high defense. The number two wide receiver is going to run a post between the safeties, while the other two on the trip side run a pick with an inside slant from the number three. The inside DB must cover the intermediate middle area of the field, which means he's going to play underneath the post route, leaving a small window to put the ball in high over his head. A pass like this requires some high velocity and perfect timing. May gets to the end of his drop back and unloads a dart to the end zone. Impressive arm strength, great placement to avoid the underneath defender while also protecting his guy from taking a big hit. Another trip's look to the right, looking to create confusion in the red zone. UNC draws up two in breaking routes over the middle, so May is watching where the safety goes. Safety ends up coming down and sitting right over the middle, which opens up the backside in route. May releases this ball as the receiver is coming out of his break. Even with the defender in the passing lane, good anticipation to fit it in a tight spot. He gives the receiver a chance to make a big catch, but the DB makes a good play. Against Virginia, the number two receiver on the weak side is gonna run up the seam. Against the cover three match look, with the three DBs playing deep, there won't be a lot of space to put the ball in as you're throwing to the strength of the defense. However, the middle of the field DB starts off on the strong side, which may reads pre-snap. He's late getting over, so as soon as the wide receiver clears the underneath safety, May rips this ball, leads the receiver up the field, and makes it impossible for the deep defender to recover. Gives his receiver an easy touchdown, again highlighting his arm strength, anticipation, and ball placement. Drake is very good at putting the ball where it needs to be based on the leverage of his receiver to the nearby defenders. He can also just drop in dimes on deep sideline routes. Versus Clemson, he looks to the lone receiver on the weak side, keeps the safety at bay by peeking to the left first before floating a ball to the right. The receiver gets pressed up right on the sideline, so May must put some air under this and put it right on the edge of the field. If he puts this more inside, the DB could have made a play on it, but instead the receiver brings down a huge gain. Although he had a top 10 big time throw rate, he also excelled in the underneath areas. In route, deep post, and a far side curl look on this play, May could maybe throw the post here, but instead throws to the curl. This is a dangerous throw to the far sideline. For that reason, May leads the receiver back to the line of scrimmage, eliminating an angle for the DB to make a play on the ball. Gives UNC a solid gain, but that little nuance is crucial. Plenty of QBs try to throw this pass more down the field and get a first, and end up throwing a pick. If he's not leading the receiver back, then he's leading the receiver to the sideline. Similar curl route here on the strong side. The receiver is slow at the top of the route, which allows the DB to fire off early, but May puts it up high towards the sideline. This placement turns this from a risky throw to a safe one. Receiver doesn't bring it down, but Drake showed that he's got impressive accuracy. Now on to his ability to read coverage. May can diagnose what the defense is doing and often makes the correct decision. Two by two look here pre-snap. Defense shows man coverage with a single high safety. Post snap, the outside linebacker is going to drop into underneath zones, and the middle linebacker is going to blitz. On the strong side, UNC runs a crosser and go, attacking the weak point in the defense down the field. With all the clutter in the short area, May needs to attack the safety, which is exactly what he does. He reads the backers dropping out, looks to the crosser, 
sees the safety come down and quickly flicks a deep ball while getting hit. He went through all of his reads and made the right play while under pressure. Clemson rolls out an eight-man coverage here, almost like a prevent defense with three deep defenders, except the middle safety is going to play more in the intermediate area. UNC runs two over routes from the inside, so May needs to hit one of these guys once they pass their initial defender. He ends up looking to the strong side slot, releases the ball as the receiver is coming out of his break, and fits it between the linebacker and safety. That's a big time throw. Versus the Cavaliers, UNC runs curl and over route concepts on each side of the formation. Virginia play their safeties a bit shallower, and they deploy a middle linebacker to clog up the center of the field. This causes May to look off the over routes but he does a nice job of working left to right, going through all his reads and being decisive at the end of his drop and hitting the backside curl. It's a great rep. Now he also displays very good poise. When pressure comes in his face, May is able to stay calm, keep his eyes downfield and make plays. Versus Clemson, Blitz comes in off the left side of the line and one defender gets in clean. May shifts in the pocket away from the Blitzers, buys himself time while reading downfield and tosses a nice moon ball while getting hit giving his receiver time to run under it and adjust to the pass, even with the incoming danger. May stayed remarkably relaxed on this play. And he does this consistently. He's not afraid of taking a shot. The Ducks run a six-man blitz on this first down snap. UNC has it covered with their line and running back. The protection holds up. May does well to step up in the pocket, avoids the rush, and then sends out a dart up the seam, leading the receiver up the field and to the end zone. Third and 17 here. Critical play versus the Tigers, four-man rush, but the end lined up on the left tackle creates penetration and gets into the backfield. May doesn't flinch as the defender fires towards him. He stands tall, flicks a touch pass to the outside, and gets his team a first down. Besides standing in the pocket and delivering under pressure, he can also make plays when things get out of structure. Against Virginia, first and ten play with 26 seconds left in the first half. UNC needs to get the ball downfield and towards the sideline. May has the underneath crosser open, but knows he needs more, so he gets away from pressure, dances around in the pocket, extends the play, and works back to the same receiver, throwing it basically horizontally. He creates something out of nothing and allows the receiver to gain yardage and get out of bounds. This kind of in-game problem solving is what you want from a QB. Later in the game, 3rd and 12 in the red zone, UNC protect with 7, which means there are only 3 receiving options. But Virginia drops 7, so off the snap, no receivers are open when May hits the back of his drop. He sidesteps pressure, moves in the pocket, resets his body, and quickly flings a pass to the end zone. Puts it right on the money, but the receiver can't bring it in. But again, Drake makes a play when nothing was there. His ability to move, read downfield, and quickly reset is super valuable. 3rd and 4 in a tie game versus South Carolina. Empty set, off the snap, not much separation from any of the receivers. Somehow the two-man rush creates some penetration, so May is forced to play some backyard football as he scrambles around the pocket, Mahomes-esque, easily avoids defenders, and he's able to move to the right, throws it back left, off-platform, puts good zip on it, and puts it in between the downfield defenders. Caleb Williams gets a lot of attention for his out of structure work, but May is great in this department too. And another thing I love about his game is his ability to make contact throws, where he's releasing the ball and getting hit at the same time. Usually these kind of plays lead to turnovers, but May can consistently deliver good plays. Versus the Blue Devils, the safety gets through the middle of the line, beats the running back, gets hands on May, spins him around, begins to tackle him, but Drake somehow, miraculously, finds a receiver downfield as his legs are getting wrapped up. And then versus Clemson, similar kind of situation. Clemson brings four, pressure gets into the backfield and May throws a jump pass while getting rocked. Gets the ball over the line and into the hands of his receiver running the crosser. The kid is tough and poised. And his final strength, red zone touch. He can throw great lob passes near the end zone. Simple high-low look here versus Oregon. The outside corner is being targeted. Mays looking for the high read. Pump fakes it, gets the defender to step up, and then tosses a high touch pass to the back of the end zone. Putting it in the perfect spot, allowing his receiver to make a play. Earlier in that game, UNC again is in the red zone. Except this time, they drop a simple fade ball to the strong side. There's a safety on that side, so May must put this ball up high to the sideline, which is exactly what he does. Elite ball placement gives his receiver a great chance in a tight window. Now to weaknesses, and there aren't many with Drake May, so I have to be kind of nitpicky. His overall decision making still can be refined a bit. He still needs to mature and take what the defense gives him on a more consistent basis. 
He's good in this area, but still has room to improve. Third and six versus Oregon. UNC draws up a three-man route concept to the strong side. So this is where May is reading. Off the snap, the underneath tight end is open, and he has room to turn this upfield. The responsible defender is way inside. However, this is not past the sticks. So May holds onto the ball instead of hitting the open guy. If he throws this, the worst scenario is a fourth and one, but it's likely that the tight end would have gotten the first down. May should have thrown to the underneath guy immediately and shouldn't be looking to force the ball downfield. Sometimes he goes through his reads too quickly and gives up on routes prematurely. Versus South Carolina, May has a receiver running a double move deep. Versus the shallow coverage, this play should work perfectly, but instead, for some reason, he gets off the read and tucks the ball. Should have been more patient in the pocket on this play. And finally, I'll say his release still needs to be sped up a bit, but that should improve at the next level. But his deep ball accuracy can be kind of spotty. You'll see him at times putting too much mustard on these long balls, not enough touch. He can throw a pretty deep ball, but still needs to work on being more consistent. Not every pass has to be perfect, and sometimes he just needs to trust that his receiver can make a play on it. Overall, Drake May is a star prospect. He has ideal size, arm strength, and toughness for the position, has a compact throwing motion. He can throw with velocity and very good ball placement at all three levels of the field. He works through his reads well and consistently leads his receivers in the right direction. He stands tall and throws with good timing and anticipation. He has great poise in the pocket, is comfortable moving around and resetting, and always keeps his eyes downfield. He extends plays only when necessary. He's not afraid of pressure and can deliver big time throws even while getting hit. He will tuck the ball and run if a lane opens up, but is not a run first player. His throwing motion can get a tad faster and he needs to work on taking what the defense gives him more often. I think he's a legit franchise quarterback and a guy deserving of being the number one selection. If the Bears do decide to keep their pick, May should be the guy. He has the highest floor and the least number of red flags in this QB class. I like Fields and I'm intrigued by the idea of adding Marvin Harrison to the offense, but May is a star and you don't get a lot of chances to add a young stud QB to your team. At the moment, out of the four QBs I've thoroughly scouted on this channel, I have May number one, Williams number two, Panics three, and Knicks four. I still need to look at Daniels and McCarthy, but from what I've seen so far, I have a hard time imagining one of them being better than Drake May. So those are my thoughts on him. Let me know what you think of May in the comments and who you want to see in the next video. That's all from me, and I'm out.